people who know and love Opera Rara's work and achievements over these last several decades will perhaps be surprised that I've chosen this work to be included in the canon of recordings and performances. I always wanted to find the right moment to choose a very famous title. And Semiramide is, through its overture, a very popular concert overture. And the title is known. But not so many people are familiar with the whole opera. It is very rarely done complete on stage with a great cast. So I thought there was something more to say about it, given the way Baroque and classical music have been recharged, re-examined, freshened in these last 30 or 40 years. Opera Rara's mission is to rediscover, restore, record and perform the lost operatic heritage of the 19th century. This project is very much about the restore bit. We are taking a piece that's been performed in a certain way and we are completely reinventing it. We are putting it into a new light for audiences to hear in the 21st century and that's tremendously exciting. One of the things that I came to respect about the opera and made me want to do it even more was in learning it totally and seeing the contrasts and seeing how the big span of each act was made up and given its pillars, yeah, and then its joinings together and its details on the way. I couldn't wait to do it complete, to do it with an original instrument orchestra, an orchestra that I know well and that we've been working together for 25 more years. And it's a completely different world for them. Almost none of them have been in a pit and played regularly in opera orchestras. So not only do they have to learn the notes in the way I want them to play them, but they have to learn how flexible and how daring they have to be to accompany a drama. We're very lucky, you know, I must say this, to have Albina Shagimuratova to do the title part. She is a very, very skillful singer indeed. And her voice sits, I would say, a little higher than the original Semiramide would have done. And this is a singer who has an incredible technique. She has a wonderful ability to understand her voice and to know how to manipulate it. This is a role for a um, musician, for a singer with uh, lots of experience. It's a diva role. This role has been done by great, great John Sutherland, uh, Edita Gruberova, uh, Mariella De Villa. This is a big name, and for me, um, it's a huge responsibility to sing this role.
really feel that Rossini is uh, on a, the brink between Romanticism and, and bel canto classical music, and you feel that sort of wanting to burst through. You know, very much you have this, the, the, the rhythms sometimes can be quite Handelian, very early, very dotted, and then other times we, we see this sort of bel canto line that, that Verdi became famous for later. So it's a real melting pot of the two styles coming together. And there are many composers who we think of as having a foot in each camp, as it were. I'm thinking of Schubert, perhaps Schumann. Many of their contemporaries had great connection to Beethoven and Haydn and Mozart, but they were forging a new voice into a new period. It's extremely uh, dramatic and intense by the standards of Rossini, which a lot of people think of as light and frothy, whereas this piece is, is a, a historical epic. in suo furor insano, il traditore, l'augusta santità delle tombe. He wanted to go back in time and construct a neoclassical world. Some people have called it the last greatest Baroque opera. Now by that I imagine they mean that it is a huge musical dramatic edifice, but its length is not uncertain and wandering and diffuse. He obviously decided that he wanted this opera to be the summation of his craft. In Semiramide, the recitatives are of a power and a mastery that is really exciting. It's just amazing. <laughs> The biggest challenge in doing this repertoire is to keep a sense of inevitability in the way the music continues. And in order to achieve that, you have to be constantly aware of how one section gives birth to the next. It's really good. I feel you, put, you form the double T for two, the first one. Do too, too late. I form it on the half bar. One. Tutto per te, lo sappia semiramide. It really is interesting that you think, okay, it's right in tempo, but it's not just that. It needs to be the exact moment in the right, right tempo, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's like a movie. You, are, you have to pay attention to every, every phrase, every words you say, and the way you say the, the words, especially in the rest, it's... So for the conductor, in an Italian opera, and this is true as much with Verdi as with Rossini, it's momentum. It's not letting your feet drag. It's making sure that the, the tempo is as flowing and as moving forward as it can in the context of the whole act. And that's hard when the act is two hours. This has evolved over a time. I, mean, I know Mark has been working with one or two of the singers for months, actually off and on. And it's amazing what the unconscious can do within this time. You know, it, you take it away and even with, even with players as well as singers, you take the music away and you come back to it and suddenly it's there. All good music making has to have the right balance of freedom and rigor. Freedom here in the heart, rigor there in the brain. And that's something that is so Italian, you know, needing to drive fast but slow down at the right moment to get yourself around the corner. That takes rehearsal because you have to unite all the players and all the singers into the same railway line. <laughs> this
this piece is particularly difficult because it's very elevated. It's very heroic, a lot of it. It has big emotions. This famous woman, Semiramis in the, the original French, has, supported by one of her satraps, one of her local governors, who's a very ambitious man, murdered her husband. He was a great man. Her guilt, their hatred of each other for having got each other to do this terrible thing, is the subject of one of the central strands of the story. This is a negative strand. This is dangerous. It's not comfortable. It's not gorgeously operatic. It has an evil center to it. Semiramide is a guilt-ridden woman. However gorgeous she is as a personality, however appreciated and admired and loved she is as a regent, she is sick at heart. She has done something unforgivable and she knows it. There are very few conductors that work in that detail. And it's not trying to find something new, but it actually all comes from the drama. That's what he's tremendously good at, is, is, is getting inside the work, drilling down into the detail. For example, working out you know, how, how a string phrase is played to get real energy behind the sound. Semiramide is the most interesting character. Queen, woman, and mother. Oh, it is an incredible role. with Albina because her voice is so rich, so beautiful, but at the same time she has amazing agility. The voices mix perfectly. The color, the timing, uh, the intention, you know, uh, this opera is full of this and it's full of the canto. I mean, we often think of bel canto as, as sort of fairly simple music, but I mean, certainly when you look at Semiramide, the rhythmic detail, you know, when it's a 32nd note or a 16th or a quaver is, is, is really important. And he obviously, Rossini spent a lot of time writing that in. You know, a lot of other composers wouldn't have bothered. They would have assumed that stylistically we would know, but Rossini really takes the time to write in every single rhythm. So we're being really careful that we're being very accurate. It's very difficult to yes to mix the the the, the pronunciation the text of the of this opera and the variation the fireworks because sometimes you have to sing so fast that it's really quite impossible to to pronounce the text exactly we have to concentrate so much for this and uh, I try to do it as theatrically as I can. Uh, it, this is, is very important for a recording because we don't have the scene, so we have to be very clear with text, with music, with, uh, with our intention to give to the role.
on stage uh, you can't do so many details because you have such a big orchestra the, the, the orchestration is very heavy uh, very unusual for Rossini but for the recording we need to have little details uh, expression in the voice fraseggio and uh, is making a very beautiful detailed work about that and it's uh, it's like a, a new opera for me because uh, we discover together new things and I see that I the role can be sung in another way. <laughs> Frankly, I have never worked uh, on the role like this before, and um, I'm very happy, extremely happy, uh, to work with such a such a maestro, grande maestro. I think this is the first time we've been down on um, what do we call it, sort of authentic instruments, historically aware um, instruments. So uh, that gives completely different colours, and the singers love this. So if the strings are going, mm, ching, ching, it's not just mm, ching, but mm, boom, boom. it's and and they see it as a whole, and that's the wonderful thing about working with this orchestra. It's it's not a wash of sound. That's part of what we're doing. We're re-energizing the piece. We're, we're looking at the orchestration and we are, we're taking it apart and building it up again anew, a new way of hearing the music, which should be very appealing to our audience. <laughs> When we have these period performances, like the OAE will bring a great clarity to it, so you're actually freer to do more with the rhythm, more with the text, more with the dynamics, without worrying that you're going to be covered. <laughs> It's a really new experience because uh, to hear Rossini with these sounds, it's, it's amazing. I hope the listener will take a sense of the really thrilling sound world that we've been conjuring, working with the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment, who are a superb ensemble, and their sense of community together is very, very powerful to the playing that they produce. Now, if you put that ingredient next to some of the extraordinarily gifted singers that we're working with, then I think you have a chemistry which is really exciting. <laughs> It is a unique recording, and you will not find um, in CD's history with this opera, this kind of version, original version, of this great, fantastic opera like Semiramide. <laughs> Thank you. 